What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Forgotten Outdoors podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Today, we are going to talk about kind of our year in review, 2020. It has been a while since we've recorded an episode. Yes. We've been building our new podcast studio, which Welcome. is looking awesome. Welcome. Not not 100% done, but we're, we're, getting, we're getting pretty dang close. We're in the decorating stage right now. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is good. Which is good. always fun. You know, we build this really pretty wall... Did some texture work and painted it all nice, and then we uh, punched a bunch of holes in it. <laughs> Even though Courtney, my wife, was like, do not mess up that clean, nice wall. You guys don't need to make it like this man cave den with a million things hanging on the walls. And What's done is done. What's done is done. We have some hides above it. You can't, you can't even see it in the shot, I don't think. We have a floating shelf up there with some, with some goods. But anyways, you're in review, Tom. What stuck out to you? What, what, what do we want to talk about first here? Uh, f- first of all, uh, this year hunting was kind of crazy. Um, I mean, I feel like that's a good place for us to start. We talked about it a little bit in episode seven, which uh, if you've been following along on all of our episodes, you've already heard about what happened with elk season. Um, yeah. But, you know, we just, we really found that it was tough to find the animals this year, really, like just in general. Um, I know I've talked about it before on the podcast, but my family, we do a deer hunt every year, Northern Idaho, and we usually just see deer like crazy, just like they're everywhere. But this year it was pretty slow. Um, I saw, I personally saw just two, I think two does and just kind of made the choice not to shoot them this year. But Hmm. I mean, it just kind of, it's one of those things. It was just kind of a weird year. Yeah, and I don't know if some of that was just us not being in our usual hunting mode. Because usually we do a lot of scouting, and we've talked about this before, and we're out there and know the area, figure out what's going on well beforehand. But this year, it's just different. I mean, the pandemic, there was a lot more hunters out there, I think. It kind of felt that way, for sure. The weather, I mean, was uncommon, at least for elk season. It was pretty warm and dry. Not a lot talking. I mean, it, this is, it's been a lot of years since I've heard that little amount of bugling from elk. Yeah. And then just, yeah, we were, I started a new job at the archer shop, Mountain Archery. You know, Thomas and I, we both moved. I had twins. It was just a crazy, crazy year. A lot of lessons learned, though. We, we started a company. Yeah. I mean, we started this. Uh, we figured out the legalities behind that, which <laughs> which was a learning learning experience. There is... The government likes to put hoops. <laughs> they got to jump through. <laughs> you have to jump through some flaming hoops before you can try to make money. So, but yeah, like it, I mean, really, we had a lot of fun getting to the point that we're at with Forgotten Outdoors. Um, so that has been fun. That's been a fun part of our year for sure. And yeah, like Ben said, it's just been crazy. A lot of kind of milestones hit this year for both of us and our families. So. Uh, just kind of is what it is, but we are very excited for what we have coming for 2021 mm-hmm. and the things that we have planned there. Um, but I guess before we get into that, I like what else, um, Ben, for you with your hunting happened this year? Uh, oh, oh yeah, duh. Um, so yeah, I work at Mountain Archery in Rexburg. It's an archery shop there. It's been an awesome job. Uh, I've worked there six months now. About the same time that we started the company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably the same week. And that I had twins and moved that week. Anyway, yeah, so through them, Sitka, they kind of took out some of their dealers. We're a big Sitka dealer. And they took me and my boss down to Mexico um, to go on a whitetail hunt. And archery whitetail hunt down in Mexico. So I went down there for a week. Um, and it, it was awesome. I have never seen such big whitetail in my entire life. It, it was insane. So the hunt that we went on, it was technically a management hunt. And so we weren't we weren't after the trophies. We would go on to these big Mexican ranches, you know, these cattle ranches, um, where they have these whitetail outfitter type operations. And we went on a coal hunt, you know, we would, we would coal out the herd. And, and if you don't know what that means, you're, you're looking for deer that are old, that have bad genetics antler wise, that people aren't going to want to shoot on a trophy hunt. 
And so we were looking for the uglies and the nasties, and and we found them. Yeah, I, I shot <laughs> I shot two bucks. Um, one of them's over here, somewhere. I don't know. It's laying around. Oh, I think it's over there. Anyway, this big, it's like a, a fork horn. I, I think the buck was probably you know five and a half years old, six years old. So old, uh, old an old whitetail buck, but just <laughs> yeah, just weird thick mass on him, like. The heavy, probably the heaviest bases on a whitetail that I've ever shot. And he comes up probably, you know, 14, 16 inches, almost straight up and then kind of curves at the top and has these two little crab claws. He's the weirdest freaking deer ever. Yeah. Well, but like, but some of the deer that Ben was, because Ben sent me a couple pictures while he was there. Some of them were impressive. Like some of them were just tanks. Oh, And huge. just tall. Yeah. So, I mean... Just just hearing the story after he got back was crazy because of the amount of deer that they saw and the size of some of the deer that they saw. Yeah, it, it was it was unlike anything I'd ever done. It was mostly blind hunting, um, and it, it wasn't a give me. I mean, there was nights that there was one night that we didn't see a deer. I mean, we we sat there for four hours and didn't see anything. But most of the nights you'd have a lot of deer coming in. Um, we so I the one night I I shot that one. That weird buck I was talking about, I shot another buck that same night about 30 minutes before um, that weird one. And, yeah, he came in, and I, I thumped him, and then he ran off, and the deer started kind of coming back in. And I saw this guy, and I freaking thumped him too, and he ran off. And both of them were, you know, really good shots, so I wasn't worried about getting out of the blind and tracking them. And then um, we sat for the rest of the night, and it was getting really really dark and that ugly horned guy's brother came <laughs> running in and you know i'd watched him for a little while i was watching him and it was just by the time he finally gave me a shot i drew back on him and i just it was dark i mean i i couldn't see very well out of that blind i didn't feel comfortable making a shot i could have hit him I, i'm sure i mean it was 20 yards it was an easy shot but i just i wasn't positive of where i was going to hit on that deer and I didn't want to wound him. Especially um, that close to dark. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I already had two bucks down that we were going to have to go and look for. And so I was like, you know what? I passed on it. And those, that, yeah, so those were the two bucks that I shot down there. Some of the other guys I went with shot some nice, big, nice old management deer and some hogs. And I shot a rattlesnake yeah. while I was down there. So, yeah, it was it was a cool trip. It was something that... Was new, yeah. I, I I'd never really experienced anything like that before. Going on one of those kind of outfit type trips where you are hunting for not the biggest thing that you see <laughs> out there, because right. usually you know you're after that trophy, that big one. And this was like the exact opposite, where we were like, yeah, that one's too big, that one's too nice. Let's go after some some junk. So it was it was fun. It's good practice. Flung some arrows, made some good shots. Built some confidence that way. So, yeah. Yeah, that was a cool hunt. Other, yeah. Other than some of our failures here. Yeah, we, <laughs> we did we did have a hard time. Um, but all in all, like, we had a lot of fun this year. We did get to scout out some new areas. Um, we kind of built our knowledge just in the scouting in general um, and utilizing Onyx for, you know, doing scouting from your computer and from your phone, which is kind of cool. Um, but, yeah, like, the year, the year was good, and – and I feel like uh, we we learned a lot both from a business standpoint and from like the outdoor standpoint. And now moving forward, we've kind of got a, a vision of what we want to do mm-hmm. with our uh, with our podcast and what we want to do to kind of help our listeners to build their confidence, not just in hunting and fishing, which is like our passion, but in some of the other things. So, I mean, going forward, we've got. We've got uh, one of our friends that we grew up with that's going to be joining us on the podcast, and he's going to be talking about mountain biking. So that's something that neither one of us do, uh, but it's something that we feel like it it kind of it falls under our mission, which is to build confidence now in the outdoors. So whatever that is for you, if that's mountain biking, if that's hunting, if that's fishing, if it's rock climbing, whatever it is, we want to try to get some some people on our show that will. Um, I guess just expand the things that we're talking about because we love hunting, we love fishing, but you know, for that, that might not be for everyone. Yeah. And, and we have a snowboarding trip coming up. I mean, there's another example of just things that are getting us outside and outdoors and fits under the umbrella. You know, we, we want to, 
that's our mission is just to get people outside and get people enjoying the outdoors. You you spoke about something earlier, Tom. Not not in this episode. We were talking about a lesson that we kind of learned. I had asked you about you know downloads and follows and people that were tuning into our podcast mm-hmm. and kind of like what what are our numbers? How many people are tuning in? And you pulled up a stre- spreadsheet and sent it to me. You want to talk a little bit about that? Kind of like what we learned and some goals that we set from from seeing that kind of spreadsheet on our episodes. Yeah, so um, one thing that we've noticed is, uh, you know, when we're when we are able to get an episode out pretty consistently, whether that's every week, every two weeks, whatever it is, um, we notice that it it creates a better following for you, um, our listeners. You're able to follow along with what we're talking about, with what we're doing, um, and so in the episodes where we have a big gap, we notice that the listening kind of drops off. So this year, we really want to focus on putting out content on our podcast weekly. Um, that's kind of the goal that we have. So we want we want all of you to know that that's coming, that we have more content now that we're in our room, things are settling down. Um, so yeah, that's one, that's one big thing that we want to do is really just focus on our podcast, make it quality, make it good um, so that our listeners are gaining knowledge from it, but then also just having something to look forward to each week. So um, I know we've put this plug in before, but we really want to hear what you guys want us to talk about. If there's a specific activity that you want us to talk about, um, you can send it to us, um, reach out to us through any of our social media or through our website. We want to know what you want to hear about. So that's that's one big thing is is uh, focusing on our, our podcast and our content and yeah. the consistency of it. Yeah, and it's exciting. We, yeah. we love doing the podcast. It's yeah. It's one of my favorite things that we do. Um, it's so fun to just, I mean, people, people get sick of hearing me talk sometimes. <laughs> and this is a, this is an instance where nobody can roll their eyes at me or walk away. And no so one gets you, to tell you to stop. <laughs> I mean, you might turn it off, but I don't have to see that. <laughs> so I can just, I can just keep talking. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's awesome. And, and moving forward in this year, now that we're kind of settled in a space and have more of a consistent rhythm and. Um, a pattern to us putting out episodes. We are bringing on guests, so that's really exciting. We have a list a mile long of people that we want on the episode, some people we've already talked to and and have agreed to come on the show with us. And so that's going to be a really fun aspect where it's not just Thomas and I. You guys are getting probably used to hearing our opinions and our, our viewpoints on certain things, but to get these guests on here, it's going to open up a lot of doors and our, our, our guests are awesome. The people that we already yeah. have planned to come on here are awesome people that have done some really cool things, and we're excited to get get talking. And who knows what where the conversations are going to go? Yeah, you it's know, true. it's going to be fun when you get new people on here. So that's something moving forward that we're excited about is um, is some new new viewpoints, some guests on our podcast. Yeah, and I think along along with the different viewpoints, we are excited. We're going to start expanding some of our um, products online through our website, some of the stuff that we're selling. Um, those of you who don't know, we have started dealing for Mountain Ops, so we carry some of their products. Um, we're kind of expanding our line with them, making sure that we can get variety uh, so that we're trying to meet all the needs of, of the people who follow along with us and who are trying to get outdoors, and we feel like Mountain Ops is a great company um, who provide great uh, supplements to assist in the efforts of getting outdoors. So we, we're expanding our business that way, just with products, with merchandise, with, um, we're actually excited that we're, we're actually working with a local who, um, we're hoping to maybe create our, some of our own products that will help mm-hmm. people in the outdoors. So we're excited about that too. Yeah. Yeah. The product side of it's been really fun. Mountain Ops is an awesome company. And, yeah. and we, when we first started talking about, Hey, do we want to carry some stuff for people and try to sell it? You know, like. What, what would we want to sell? What, what do we think people would want to buy? What do we value? And what kind of company has viewpoints similar to our viewpoints? And yeah, Mountain Ops was like the first on the list. Yeah, we, we wanted them since basically day one. Yeah, we're like, we, we should care for these guys when we start having those conversations. Just because it's something that we've used. They're a new company. I, I mean, we haven't been using them for the last 10 years or something. It's been within, you know, the last year and a half, two years. Yep. But we've really fell in love with the product. Um, we fell in love with, you know, the company's direction and kind of what they focus on. And it's 
it's that outdoor minded, you know, trying to help people have a better experience in the outdoors. Um, and they're fun. They, they've been really fun to work with really on top of it. Awesome products. So, so that's been fun developing some new products, um, kind of of our own is, is an exciting, an exciting thing as well. And, yes. um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure that we'll continue to branch out as far as things that we carry, you know, we'll, we'll keep you guys updated on our social media and, and on our website, we'll, we'll keep that stuff up to date, but yeah, moving forward, a lot of, a lot of good things to come in 2021. Yeah. After after the weird the craziness the of 2020. The weird year of 2020. And I'm sure you guys all feel the same. Yeah. What a weird freaking year. I mean, as the year kind of wrapped up, I don't know. You, you, I, I at least have times where you sit down and you reflect, and the end of the year is kind of a good time. It's kind of a, <laughs> a natural response to, to what's going on. And, yeah, I can't remember a year where <laughs> I I had the feelings that I had looking back <laughs> at at the year that I had just uh, oh. endeavored. I mean, it was yeah, it was it was rough. It was good. It was it was all over the place. But yeah, we're excited to move into 2021. Super excited for the upcoming hunting season. Yeah, and and you know, I guess just kind of getting into it a little bit. We lately we have been ice fishing. Yeah, um, yeah. which is kind of a fun. Um, fun way to transition out of 2020 and into 2021. Um, you know, it's a way that we are still, still able to get outside yeah. and enjoy the outdoors and, uh, do some of the things that we love, even when it's freezing and there's <laughs> 10 inches of ice on the water and, um, things like that. But that's been a really fun activity that we've been doing too. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, it's a more laid back approach to some of our outdoor activities. I mean, you take archery elk hunting and it's like one of the most extreme, you know, outdoor adventures that we do. It's so, <laughs> it, it, it's brutal. It's a yeah. lot of time. It's a lot of hiking a lot and of work. the nastiest country. Thomas and I, we, I don't, I don't even remember if we've talked about it. It's been a while now. We, we were elk hunting this last year and got down into the nastiest Canyon <laughs> that was so steep and so, oh. so thick. Like, I don't know why we didn't turn around, but we got to the bottom and we're like, well, now what? Like, now we got to go back. Up. Now we have to go back out of this thing, and every elk in the the county is gone now because we were just <laughs> trying to get through. It, I think we were on a game trail, and it just we weren't paying attention, yeah, and, and it, it petered out. out and, yeah, yeah. So, so going from that extreme where <laughs> you know you have a big pack and you're up in nasty country, and then you get something and you're hauling hundreds of pounds out on your back um, to sitting let's, there talking. Let's go and you <laughs> with know, the heater. Yeah. <laughs> hike a couple hundred yards out onto the lake. We'll drill a couple holes in the ice, which we have a drill for that, like not even a hand auger, but that we just <laughs> electronically yep. go through the ice. And then we hang out, we sit, we eat some food, make some make some food. And yeah, we just kind of hang out and catch some fish. And it's fun. The last trip we went on, we slammed perch. Yeah, it was it was kind of unreal how many how many perch we caught. But but yeah, that's that's been a fun kind of break from. From, from the some, laborious from the, hunting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some of the more labor intensive outdoor activities that we do. But yeah, with the ice fishing this year was my first year doing it. So, I mean, it was kind of one of those things. This year has been a lot of firsts. 2020 had a lot of firsts for me. I did my first duck hunting experience with mm, yeah. Ben. Um, you know, did my first archery hunting, did my first uh, ice fishing now. And it's just fun. It's just fun to get out and try stuff and... Um, you know, some of it I'm still not very confident or good at, like the duck hunting this last time I was explaining to Ben how, um, how I feel, I felt weird trying to get a shot off if I thought that somebody else shot it before me, but it's just part, that's part of the activity. And so it's just learning about it, um, finding out what, you know, what's the proper etiquette of that type of hunting. Yeah. And, uh, so that it's just kind of cool. Like I, I really feel like for me personally, 2020 brought a lot of new adventure to my life and brought a lot of new outdoor activities that I can add um, to the things I love to do now. And so it's been, it, it has been good in that way. And ice fishing has just been a really fun way to kind of wrap up the year for me and just, just relaxing. Like what Ben said, it's, it's super laid back. Uh, there's no pressure, but it's just, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And, and, the firsts, man. The firsts are the first. so it's so fun. That's what our company's founded off of. And it's funny because Thomas has been hunting a lot longer than I have. Mm -hmm. You know, I and you've probably 
I don't know about fishing. I don't know. I mean, probably about the same. Probably about the same. We kind of grew up fishing, but but hunting. Thomas has hunted longer than me, and then when I kind of got into it, I dabbled into different aspects of it, mainly because of you know some of my coworkers, right? And and and, and your job at the Oak Ranch. And, and, that and was a big thing too. And my job, yeah. I mean, it just kind of got me into some different avenues of that hunting world. And now you're getting some of the first that I've already experienced where I was getting some of the first that you had already experienced. And, and so even if you, you know, are a hunter, there's different things to explore. Maybe you, maybe you haven't duck hunted, maybe you haven't archery hunted. Um, and so, yeah, I, I encourage it to, to try those things. Yeah. You know, don't just be like, well, I didn't grow up doing it and no, just try it. Just try it. (laughs) You, what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to go out duck hunting and not kill anything? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's your worst case scenario. <laughs> You're still out in in the outdoors and enjoying other people's company. I mean, yeah. So venturing out and exploring new things. There's a lot of resources out there. You know, YouTube videos, tutorials, and and that's another thing that we're planning on on doing. And here is a lot of tutorials and kind of talking through some of the steps and the the more technical side of things instead of talking like we do in this podcast, but right. talking the technical side of this is actually how. You how do you do this. what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, this is how you tie these certain knots, you know, for your for your line for fishing. And so we want to get into that and just help you guys, you know, venture into new arenas of the outdoors. And um, yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah. So we're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to 2021. We hope that all of you are looking forward to 2021. Um, just great things to come, really. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think this lo- episode is... As long as some of the other ones that we do, it feels kind of like a natural place to kind of cut this one off. You know, right. it's just kind of, this is our, I guess, our, our entry back into the podcast um, and kind of a transition from what we were doing last year into let's kick off 2021, big things to come, a lot of exciting things to talk about. And I just don't want this one to go on super long. And I want to give those things that we want to talk about the appropriate amount of time to talk about. So I think we're going to wrap it up. It's been awesome. Super excited. I can't say that enough. I think we've said it about a hundred times in this episode. Super excited for 2021. Things to come. Keep listening to the podcast, guys. Like we always say, you know, subscribe, uh, whether it's on YouTube, Spotify, whatever it is, uh, get on our website or on our social media, give us a follow and give us some feedback. We appreciate it, guys. Have a good one out there. Stay safe, and we will talk to you later. We'll see you.